Hi, I'm Jackie Rankin. My background is photography. I got my first job at the age of 16. So I had to learn how to catch a very fast moving object. In fact, it was a greyhound. Moving past the finish post, and I had 22 chances every afternoon on a Saturday to, to get that dog on the post with a few other dogs in the background. So um, my background really is, is about capturing movement. I went on to photograph uh, horse racing after that, and then one thing leads to another and all of a sudden I'm photographing somebody's wedding. I ended up teaching though at uh, Goldman TAFE and I, I was teaching black and white art photography and through that experience it, it allowed me to have more time to shoot for myself and landscape became my passion and it still is. Uh, now I live in Queenstown, New Zealand with, uh, with my husband Mike Langford and we have a, a school of photography there and the landscape is, is amazing. My style of photography now, after, because I've matured a little bit, you know, I've been doing it 30 years, is, is landscape. That's, that's what gives me that buzz. Back in 1992, I actually won uh, the Landscape Photographer of the Year with the AIPP. And this is where competitions are really healthy because they, they push your boundaries a little bit. I then won the Canon AIPP Photographer of the Year that same year, which was part of that same competition. That, that photography was all about aerial photography and, and I did a whole series of images called Aerial Abstracts, which were photographed from upside down in an old biplane. And uh, that won a couple of awards too. So that whole experience helped me to believe in myself and, uh, and made, me, it made some changes. And I made changes that now have ended up that I'm living in New Zealand. When I was teaching at Goldman TAFE, uh, there was a, another teacher, Johnny Lewis, who's a, quite a well-known art photographer. He, uh, he pushed me to, to, make, to, to create series of work. Um, I was sort of doing it, but I didn't really have my head switched on, and, and he was a, a little bit of a guiding influence back then. Now I guess one of my major influences is Mike Langford. He's the current Australian Landscape Photographer of the Year and uh, we often go out shooting together and we come back with totally different sort of photographs. We'll get out and we'll go, you'll put on a long lens and I'll go to wide angle or opposite. But we also share what we do because it's, you know, photography is about sharing. We like to do that. There's a couple of images I, I, I'm proud of. One was one of those early aerial abstract photographs because it was part of changing my life. But something that's recent that maybe you've seen would be uh, a shot of I Love Dark Rooms. It was an image used by Canon uh, to promote their 5D Mark II, which is a camera I just love the bits. Mike and myself going for a drive up in the country, found this old shed. People had been there for years and years, and it was full of character. But I wanted to get a feeling of that character in the room, and I looked around for some props. I found a nice chair, an old chair, and I put it in the light so that the light was coming through, and a sense of somebody being there without being there. Uh, the last thing I did was, because the light was coming through, but I needed a bit of atmosphere, and photo good photographs, I reckon, have got emotion. And so I got a little bit of nose grease off my nose. You know, pe some people got it in different spots. <laughs> and just that little bit of grease, it's an old trick, you just put it on the front of your filter. If you brush it that way, then the light spreads out the opposite way, and it created a little shard of light that just was that little, that's it, ding. Firstly, you're going to need a tripod, something that's sturdy, that's not going to blow away if it's windy. The next thing is you're going to need, if you've got one, one of these. This is a, um, you don't have to have them, but it's a cable release, so you don't shake your camera when you're taking the picture. It's going to be hard to photograph or focus possibly in the dark, so maybe think about putting it onto manual focus so you can focus a little bit more. And because it's going to be dark, Maybe taking a torch with you could be good. So you can shine the torch on what you want sharp and help the camera to focus. If you don't have a tripod, another thing you could use would be the ISO on your camera. The ISO is just a reading that tells the sensor to be more sensitive to light. Just remember that the higher you go, you can get more digital noise or not quite as sharp. If you've got a DSLR that's got live view, you're in luck because that's a great way to, of visualising and being able to pre-visualise how things are going to look. The good thing about shooting in the dark is that you've shot, you've got to make, it, got to make your blacks black, but those white areas that were 
Maybe it used to be blown out where you couldn't see any detail. As you start to underexpose and shoot more into that dark area, you get more detail in those lights and it becomes quite exciting. You start to see in a totally different way and I really encourage you to get into that area minus three, minus four exposure, see what it looks like. You can't have too much contrast. Too many tones going from black, grey tones and white. They've got to be mostly dark, so you've got to find a subject that is mostly dark to begin with. You know, a black cat against a black wall, it's still got to be a black cat and a black wall in the daytime because the blacks are supposed to be black, so make sure you get your exposure into the minus side. Ideas matter in photography. The outline idea here is, is dark, nearly dark, but I can't have a whole lot of pictures that are like black and I can't see what, what's going on. I need to have some sort of message. The best message I think that, that you can do is an emotive message. Communicate a, a story or a, an emotion through texture maybe or an expression. Um, feel it for yourself. When you're looking at a, a subject, Try and describe it in your own words. Is it mysterious? Is it gloomy? And then try and make that communication uh, through that photograph. Uh, and so when you look at the picture, it feels that way to you. Uh, now, it's up to you to experiment how you do that. Uh, if I can feel it through that little picture that I might see on the screen or, you know, my first run through, if it has impact, it's gonna make me go, mm, I'll pull that one out and check that a bit more. If I weren't a professional photographer, I'd be an amateur photographer.